All right, we are at MRF 2018, or MRF, the Midwest Rep Rap Festival, and this is probably the world's best community 3D printing event out there. So we're going to check out some of the best community stuff that I've seen here. Um, but first, thank you to Matter Hackers and Ultimaker for sponsoring this trip. But yeah, let's get right to it. All right, David. This looks like nothing that I've seen before. This is this is pretty. Cool. How how are you doing this? Okay, I am printing two layers on the bed. Then I am laying the fabric down, taping it down around it, and then continuing the printing. So this is like a nylon mesh, or you have you also um, have some with I glass have, fiber, right? I have different nylon meshes, uh, organza. I've even done. Um, screen door um, mesh the stuff that you use for a screen door. All right, that, that's pretty robust. And so that'll give you really robust ideas. And then I've also in dropped in uh, mirrors. And this actually, there's no glue in this. So, yeah, so the, it, basically the mesh actually gets captured by the, the print layers, right? Yeah. It gets fused to the print, it becomes one. But it, it's yeah. the, of course, it, it's a mesh, it stays flexible, right? Yeah, exactly. And you're not just doing this with FDM, you're also doing this with, uh, with SLA. This is my uh, friends at CoCreate. They created this little tiny um, resin-based one. So you have to actually do a couple of layers and then put it on the bed and then zip tie it around the top and hold it taut. And then you keep on dipping it down until you get this little tiny... Yeah, and, and that is a... I mean... If you get the chance to feel this in person, this feels amazing. Like this or the, the smaller ones. You're also doing some stuff with uh, paper clips right there? Yeah. So yeah. Same idea? Same idea. Have, the, have basically the cavities for it. And then they were printed, spaced out. And then you actually can extend them or close them all the way, way back up. And then also... Yeah. And they stay in one piece. Like they don't fall out. Yeah. Yeah, I actually have a little peg for each one of these that actually holds the paper clip in. So it's a mechanical linkage that actually holds it in. Awesome. Uh, how can people find more info on that project? The easiest way is actually through my Instagram, Shory Designs. So. Cool. Thank you. All right, Joe, Sir Prusha, what do you have to show? Okay, so we brought the new multi-material uh, version 2. Uh, should, we, should we talk about it? Yeah, of course. I mean, that's what you're here for, right? Okay, so we uh, we did some changes to the design. The biggest change is that it actually uses the... It's, it's a hybrid system. It's not Bowden anymore. So you have direct right extruder. It's very easy to take off the printer. So you have the exactly same settings, no no retraction changes or anything like that. We added one more uh, one more filament so we, or material. So you have five materials. And we uh, got rid of the Bonte gears inside, so it's much cheaper. And uh, it works uh, like revol revolver selector. And one cool thing is that we actually made a new board for it, which basically has Arduino and three Trinamic drivers. So it's more uh, you know, self-contained thing and makes it more reliable. We also added some I.O., so you have, uh, you have buttons and status, LEDs, uh, status LEDs, so you can troubleshoot it better. Okay. So you have three drivers on here, you have three motors, but you're doing five filaments. Can you just show us the, the revolver system that you've got okay. set up here? Okay, so you have, uh, you have five uh, extruder pulleys, and you have a selector with idler, uh, idler bearings. So when you, basically when it's closed down, uh, by rotating the, the re uh, revolver, I guess, uh, you select which, uh, which uh, drive gear will engage on the filament. Yeah. So it only presses down on one filament at a time? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. And also, then uh, you have the Bowden uh, tube going out of here, so it parks where it needs to go, so you don't have the splitter where we got uh, a lot of jams in the previous version. And if the filament fails to load into the main extruder, it uh, backs up, and there is actually uh, a blade on it, so it can cut off the end and try to load again. That is an awesome system. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. All right, Jet Guy, what did you bring to MRF this year? That, that, looks, that looks amazing, by the way. I bought the Otavina open source uh, Ruby's Cube Solver. It's on Thingiverse. Um, and so you 3D print 
the entire assembly. It uses eight servos and a Palulo uh, servo uh, controller. And then it's an IoT 10 app, so you can run it either from a Raspberry Pi or Windows 10 PC. And you just download the app, and it uses a web camera to take the pictures of the cube and then solve it. So how long did it take to print you this thing? About 200 hours. And I, I did use multiple printers in parallel, so it might actually take a typical person maybe 300 hours. Okay. Any world records in solving a Rubik's Cube yet? No, this one's not the, not the record holder, but it's a very nice project to build. Awesome. Can we see it running? Sure. So it's just taking the photos right now? or? Yes, it's just taking the photos of each side, and it actually takes two photos of each side with the grippers in and out so it can capture the image of all the uh, individual squares. And then once it's taken those 12 pictures, it immediately goes to the uh, algorithm solving section and we'll just begin making moves to rapidly solve the cube. The, for the pauses is that we found that the, the USB, typical USB webcams, they actually work better in video mode capture than still capture. So it actually captures 15 frames of video for each picture. And that's why you see it pause for a slight second to take the take the image. How long does it typically take to solve a Rubik's cube for this machine? Typically, we were measuring it yesterday about under two minutes. Typically, uh, the only the only thing that's important is you do use a genuine Rubik's cube because of the square faces. Some of the cheaper uh, ones have non-square circles or square faces, and so the image software is using that to identify the face. Would you say this is uh, useful? Extremely useful. We call it timewaster.exe. That's it. And it's now solved. Yeah. All right, Justin. So you're working on BotQ, and I still know that from the old days. Um, but you're completely reimagining that entire thing. So, what what is it? What's what can people do with it? Yeah, so uh, Baki right now is a uh, queuing and cluster control system. Uh, it allows you to run multiple printers, and you can just send a job to like one endpoint, and it'll pick a printer and print the job there. It'll handle slicing and the whole nine yards for you. So that's what's, where it's at currently. Hope to take it even further uh, from here. Yeah, so basically, you have any amount of printers, any, any amount of different printers, and you have a set of parts that you want to print, and they automatically handle all that. So for Joel's uh, huge car, that would have been ideal, basically, right? Yep. Yeah, so uh, Lulzbot runs BotQ. They have been for several years. Uh, they were able to go, I think they're up to 24 hours a day, five days a week uh, on it. So, you know, it really helps managing all this stuff. And because you don't have to, you know, do it one by one, you don't lose count of how many parts you've printed or whatever. It keeps track of all of that for you. Uh, so, and it's also good, like, both uh, Lulzbot and uh, Prusa have, like, uh, uh, homogeneous clusters, right? But for, for, for some people, they have different printers, different print bed sizes and stuff like that. So it's also very useful for that. And it also works with just one printer if you want to. Yep, totally works with one printer. Uh, the current version with one printer is the same as running a cluster, so I'm going to change that in the next version to make it a little bit easier to work with one printer. Uh, my goal is to make it as easy to work with one printer as it is to work with a thousand. Awesome. And where can I find more information on that? Uh, BotQ.com, B-O-T-Q-U-E-U-E.com. Yep. Awesome. All right, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. I mean, people have been bothering me about this. What's, what's your, your plan with this? What's the, the core idea? Tell me about it. It's your machine, right? So it's not, you don't buy a kit that's one size. You make it to fit whatever you're going to use it for. 3D printer, laser. It, it's a prototyping powerhouse. And it's fully customizable with just varying lengths and everything. So you're building this out of 3D printer parts and fairly standard. Like this is, what, what, what's this tubing? Conduit or? Electrical conduit. The cheapest it gets, 20 foot for eight bucks. I tried, you know, the position where the toolet is going to be mounted. It does flex a bit. Does it mill? I mean, what would you recommend? Like, it's, it's about the milling. What would you recommend it for? You, you, all the way up to aluminum. You just have to learn how to work the tool. So everything is going to move. It's just to what degree. If you get the cam right, there isn't very much force at all. But when you're learning, you're going to drag it around. You're going you're gonna to hurt stuff. So with it being cheap and printed, if you break something, you print a new part. I'm seeing a lot of chunky parts on there. Uh, how, much, how much filament does this use fully printed? Uh, kilo and a half. What sort of a precision are you getting out of this? I mean, we're seeing the, the pen plot, and this is looking really nice. Well, so this new plot has kind of surprised me. I had to update the firmware to get the resolution higher. So I've got the, the arcs at, at 0.1 millimeter resolution. But wood, wood is as good 
as you can measure it. And then aluminum and plastic all the way up. If, if you take the time and get the tool pass and finishing pass right, it's as good as I've ever needed it. But I've never really done a study. Awesome. And the plans for this are open source, so people can build their own, right? Yeah, it's all on, it's all on and up there. The, the CAD files aren't open source fully yet. It's coming. I'm learning to let go a little bit. But yeah, everything's there. Nothing's hidden. If you need a dimension, I'll give it to you. But yeah, it's there. But you're also selling kits for this. How much is this machine as is? And does it come with tools? Uh, no, so the hardware plastic for everything but the conduit and a tool, it's about 440 bucks from me if you don't have anything else. So you add a tool, you're, you're still under 500 bucks. So you're basically saying I should build one. You know, can I dare you to do it? Uh, do I have a choice? I think you have to at this point. You have enough printers, it'll take you a couple of days. I guess I should. All right, I guess I guess that's going to be one of the next projects. Uh, thank you, Ryan, for your time. All right, so those were some of my favorite things that I saw here at Murph 2018. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite part was. If you've been here, like if I missed something, definitely let me know. Thank you to Matterhackers and Ultimaker for making this trip possible. As always, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, and uh, yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.